for anyone that's been keeping up with the happenings going on at the Consumer Electronics Show there in Las Vegas of this year. They may have recently seen a little blurb about the Lego company. And in fact, Lego was there at Pepcom, their booth at the Consumer Electronics Show, unveiling their third generation of the Mindstorms line of robotics kits. That being the Mindstorms EV3. And the EV3 is the third generation in the, in the line. He first started with the Robotics Adventure System released way back in 1998. And this was the day of Windows 95 and 98 operating systems. He had the yellow RCX Robotics Command Explorer brick as part of the main feature of the Robotics Adventure System. And it was version 1.0. And they used a serial interface to communicate with the PC. The USB was not really around at that time. It was just beginning to show up. And the RCX brick also with version 1.0 featured a power jack for being able to use the little wall adapters to power your robotics creation instead of using up batteries. Then they upgraded to version 1.5 a few years later in that introduced a couple new elements in the set, such as a clutch gear and a couple of other parts. And then you got version 2.0, which included a new redesign of the LEGO graphical software used for programming. They also got a new 2.0 version of the RCX, which took away that uh, external power jack. And it was actually designed to support a rechargeable battery, which they never made. Now, in 2006, they upgraded to the second generation. We got the NXT system. And, of course, NXT standing for next, as in next generation. And we got, a, you know, more powerful motors, a more intelligent brick with more memory that could do sound and images on it. We got a new variety of sensors to go with it. I mean, you've got at least two dozen sensors you can use with the NXT system now. It's, it's expanded so much with the things you can do. And now we've got the third generation system, the EV3. And there were two versions of the NXT, by the way. You had version 1.0, which is also went to a studless system. And then you got 2.0 with new software and a new set of elements. That was really the only major changes, along with the introduction of LEGO's own color sensor in the 2.0 version, substituting that sound sensor that was in 1.0. So let's get on with the EV3 now. The EV3 was released seven years after the NXT was, and it was eight years between the robotics adventure system and the NXT. So I wouldn't be surprised if it takes six years to have the fourth generation after the EV3 and I guarantee you there'll be an EV3.5 you know somewhere in between there but anyway I'm trying to figure out you know what does EV stand for in EV3 for this new Mindstorm system my guess is, is that it stands for evolution that would be my guess you know evolution 3 because we know the 3 is for third generation, but nobody said what EV stands for, so I'm, I'm assuming it means evolution. That's just a little side note that nobody's pointed out yet, if that's what, they're, if that's what it stands for, because it's always stood for something. Now, now, the main focus, of course, is the EV3 brick. So, let's talk a little bit about what this brick is. It's got about the same overall dimensions as the standard NXT brick that we're already familiar with. However, the new high-resolution display they have on it has the casing stick out about a stud higher on it. So you get, you get kind of this little bit of bulge on the top of it, which you can see in the picture. It's also got light-up buttons on it and a couple of other different things. It also has a differently designed battery cover. So, if you want to get the rechargeable battery pack for it, it still takes six double A's, just like all the previous uh, robotics in the uh, system bricks. That you'll obviously have to get a new rechargeable pack for that because it uses two tabs on each side, both for locking and for inserting the packet, as opposed to the NXC single tab pack uh, lid on each side. So, 
they're not interchangeable, so you're going to have to get a new one. But it still charges via a 10 volt DC adapter. So if you already got the adapter, you don't have to buy another one. Just you got to buy the battery. <sighs> now the thing, now the EV3 is backwards compatible with NXT sensors and motors. They're pretty much genuinely, genuinely the same. They just got some design changes to the casing. So it still uses the same kind of NXT style telephone connectors and wires to connect components. Now the brick, well let's move aside from the brick a little bit and then actually talk about the retail set and then go back to the brick. Now as far as the retail set goes we have two large motors. They're essentially the same as the NXT motors. Same motor armature that's used in the power functions XL motors with the same kind of gear reduction. It's just that it's in a different casing now so it's got different mounting capabilities compared to the original NXT motor. And we also get a single media motor. Now, some may think this is kind of a downgrade from the NXT because we got three powerful motors. This has two powerful motors and one slightly weaker motor because it's based on the Power Functions media motor, just in a different casing because it has to include an encoder to measure the amount of rotations and then also change that Power Functions connector to an NXT style connector. Now also, the, now the retail version substitutes the ultrasonic sensor for an infrared sensor, and it has two functions. The infrared sensor is used for object, object detection, kind of just like what the ultrasonic sensor does, but the infrared sensor can of course pick up infrared signals because infrared is light. And it comes with a little remote, we'll talk about that a little bit later, that it can pick up infrared signals from an infrared beacon and be able to track that. So we'll talk about that a little bit when we get to the one of the components that come with the retail system. Now we've still got two touch sensors just like what the NXT 2.0 set came with. So you got two touch sensors and you've got the same Lego color sensor but it's been redesigned. So it looks a little different but it's still essentially the same color sensor. And now that component I was talking about a little earlier that comes with it is you get this mini infrared remote. And the remote itself is based on the regular small power functions remote. And it's got several functions. It can use to control the robot with remote. You can also use it again as an infrared beacon in conjunction with the infrared sensor. So it will emit infrared light and the infrared sensor will pick up the light from that acting as a beacon and the robot will be able to lock on to that and actually measure the distance from it. Huh. Now as far as something like the educational version of the EV3 goes it's mostly the same. Of course there are differences with the educational version because of its intended use. Now the educational user they take away the infrared sensor and replace it for a redesigned ultrasonic sensor. So you lose that infrared sensor with the educational version, but you gain a, a new ultrasonic sensor. And they also include Lego's own gyro sensor. So now they have a gyro sensor in there too. But you still get the same color sensor and two touch sensors that the retail set has. Now we're going to go back to the brick and actually talk about some of the brick's internals that it has. So first thing I mentioned about the brick is that display. It has a high resolution black and white display and you know I would have liked it to have either one make the display color or number two make the display backlit because any of us that have been looking at the NXT screen under certain lighting conditions probably has found it rather hard to read and it would have been nice if there was a little bit of backlighting on that screen. Now, of course, if it was a color screen, it would definitely have backlighting already on that. But, you know, someone's probably going to open the brick and hack it to put a little bit of backlighting on the screen because I've already seen that kind of modification done on the NXT, so it wouldn't surprise me if someone does it with the EV3. Yeah. Now, the EV3 also features a new processor. It has an ARM 9 processor, so it's got higher clock speeds, it can do calculations faster, 
And it's got a little more capability too. Now they just say it has an ARM9 processor. They don't say specifically what it is or what the clock speed is or anything like that. So all we know is is that it's supposed to be better. <laughs> now a couple of the main things I like about it, I'm going to go through some of them here. It has a micro SD card expansion slot. And for any of us that have used the NXT trying to put images or large sound files on it, have probably found that it runs out of space very quickly. This micro SD card slot allows for expansion of the onboard memory for stuff like that and additional programs. So it's kind of a nice bonus that they finally got that on there. Now there's 16 megabytes of flash memory for its Linux operating system. So yes, it does have an open source operating system. So hackers galore. I mean, they're going to be already working at it the moment it comes out. And we got 64 megabytes of RAM. Now, of course, that's volatile memory, so if the batteries go dead, all that memory in the RAM goes away. But that's 64 megabytes of RAM for storing all your programs and other data. Now, there's also a full-size USB port on the side of the EV3 as well. This allows you to connect up things like Wi-Fi dongles. So with that Linux operating system on the EV3, you can actually use this on a Wi-Fi network probably to download programs to it or connect to it remotely for control probably several things like that it still has Bluetooth on it like the NXT system did and you know there was a news article or whatever I read that they thought one of the big new things with the EV3 was Bluetooth uh, I don't quite think so because the first generation NXT had Bluetooth on it that was used for remote control and downloading of apps and whatnot, so yeah, I think they've got that a little off on that part. But that's just something I want to point out. The big one big thing is that it supports Android and iOS right out of the box. So if you've got an Android tablet or cell phone or an iPhone or iPad, you know, you can just hook right up to the E V three build program work with it right out of the box, don't even need a computer. And one of the interesting features is Autodesk teamed up with Lego and actually made a 3D building environment. So you've got 3D building instructions now, you can move the objects around the screen so you can get a definitive view where parts go and get a nice clear uh, display of what goes where. So it makes the building instructions a little bit easier to follow. And the last couple of things with the EV3, there's four input ports on it, so it's got the same number of input ports for sensors. And the ports have a thousand samples per second. Now that's one second, one sample per millisecond. So if you've got a critical uh, application that needs that data sample very fast, this will give you a sample per millisecond or a thousand samples a second. Now, one of the other major things is it's got four output ports, not just three like we've been used to. So there's a fourth output port. So you, I guess theoretically you could use four motors or some other output application with it. And let's see, finishing up here because I've only got about a minute and a half left. I've already discussed the Android and iOS support. It does have extensive on-brick programming. So another thing that doesn't require a computer is the brick itself. So you can do a lot of programming on the brick for a lot of basic commands. So it allows you to get started pretty quick. And the set itself, it'll have five models that you can build out of the set. There'll be online instructions that will also go with it that you can download that'll give you 17 models. And as far as the set goes, it's supposed to come out second half of this year it's going to be retailing for $350 so it's going to be a little bit on the expensive side but you know any Mindstorms enthusiast will say it's probably worth it and so time is coming up rather quick here so I'm going to end this but that's pretty much the the general information of course there's probably other things I'll mention about it in other posts maybe in other videos and I'm certainly going to try to get a hold of one of these sets to uh, show to people because I know Brick Fair will be coming and they might want to see it. But again, it's it depends on that definitive release date that LEGO has for it. So again, this is just a little tidbit 
about the new Mindstorms EV3.